Perchloric acid looks like a pretty interesting thing, so let's make some and do a video about it. Some info. It's a clear, oily liquid and an extremely, I put very, but extremely is probably a better word, strong oxidizer. Concentrations above or equal to 85%. It can spontaneously explode. Doesn't happen often to many acids. And as an acid, it's stronger than sulfuric acid, hydrochloric acid, and nitric acid. Is actually considered a super acid little diagram of the acid molecule there's a chlorine atom in the middle here with three double bonded oxygens at the bottom one single bonded oxygen here at the top which is single bonded to a hydrogen it has four readily available oxygens but particularly these three right here its melting point is a negative 17 degrees celsius 1.4 degrees fahrenheit and its boiling point is 203 degrees celsius or 397.4 degrees fahrenheit it was first discovered by austrian chemist friedrich von stadion around 1810 it's not exactly known when it was uh, found because his notes are hard to decipher. I think they were partially eaten by this stuff right here. Ah, the dangers of first finding some pretty bad stuff. The azeotrope of perchloric acid in water only allows a percentage of 72.5%. It's also very hygroscopic, a lot like sulfuric acid is. The reaction that's going to proceed as we make this is 34 ammonia perchlorate plus 36 nitric acid plus 8 hydrochloric acids and some heat will yield 34 perchloric acids plus 4 chlorine gas, 35 nitrous gas, and 3 waters. These gases of chlorine and nitrous are things you don't want around your face. So even though I'm going to be using a fume hood, I'm going to put a tube with these gases at the end of the experiment that will go through a solution of potassium hydroxide. So the reactions that will occur are the chlorine gas plus potassium hydroxide yields potassium chloride, potassium chlorite, and water. And the nitrous... 3 nitrous plus 2 KOH yields 2 nitrogen gas. It's the only gas that's left, plus potassium nitrite and water. Because we're using nitric acid, if any nitrogen dioxide is produced, it will also react with the potassium hydroxide to produce potassium nitrite, potassium nitrate, and water. Any of the gases that are produced here run through the KOH solution, which you can see I drew down here, will be taken care of and a fume hood will be used. Over in our materials, this is what we need. Ammonium perchlorate, 50 grams. H2O, 60 milliliters. These two will be mixed together first. Then 68% nitric acid, 40 milliliters. And then hydrochloric acid, which will be around 30, 31%. Muriatic acid, uh, which you get at the hardware store, will be mixed with 25 milliliters of water, which will give you 40 milliliters of about 11.6% hydrochloric acid solution. And I'm going to show you how I, how I got that pretty straightforward so we have our 15 milliliters of hydrochloric acid 30 31 percent and our water 25 milliliters the total volume is 40 milliliters we're going to use the uh, equation c1v1 equals c2v2 our c1 right here is going to be 0.31 from 31 percent up here and we have 15 milliliters of that that's equal to c2 which we don't know times v2 which will be the total volume which we figured out as 40 milliliters. 0.31 times 15 gives you 4.65 is equal to C2 times 40 and we've crossed out the milliliters on both sides. 4.65 divided by 40 is equal to C2 so C2 is equal to 0.116 which when you multiply it by 100 gives you 11.6 percent hydrochloric acid with a total volume of 40 milliliters. So we're back and we know how we got that 11.6 percent hydrochloric acid. Our methods are as follows. We're first going to dissolve the ammonium perchlorate in 60 milliliters of water. This does not dissolve great in water, so we'll just dissolve as much as we can. It does not matter. In the end, the reaction will still proceed properly. So here's our ammonium perchlorate in 60 milliliters of water at the bottom right here. We're going to then add the 68% nitric acid to the same uh, flask right here, and then I'm going to immediately put my addition funnel on top of that and seal this up really well. Then we're going to heat to a boil, a good boil. While that's boiling is happening, we're going to drip in our hydrochloric acid here into this mix. As it's happening, there's going to be a lot of gas produced, which will come up over in the distillation setup. Again, no water whatsoever will be needed. It'll go through the round bottom flask at the bottom here, and then out the snout here and into the potassium hydroxide. And we went over already what's going to happen to the gases once they reach that. After all of the hydrochloric acid has been added, it's just a matter of heating the mix on the bottom here until a dense white smoke appears. At that point, we have reached the 203 degrees Celsius, which is the boiling point of our perchloric acid. And at that point, it produces a dense white smoke, a lot like uh, sulfuric acid. 
when you heat it uh, enough, eventually you'll get that dense white smoke. Once that happens, we know we've driven off all the water, all the gases, and we should have just perchloric acid left on the bottom here. Well, this is another topic we just killed like a dead horse. Let's go do it. All right, 50 grams of ammonia perchlorate pre-weighed. 40 milliliters of 68% nitric acid pre-measured. 15 milliliters of 31% hydrochloric acid pre-measured. Way, way too much water, not measured one bit, to be used in varying amounts throughout the experiment. Here's my source of potassium hydroxide. It uh, is over the counter, of course, and if you look right here, it says contains potassium hydroxide. There might be other things in here, small amounts, but it should work fine for this experiment. Measured out 25 milliliters here of the water, and I'll be adding to that, of course, the 15 milliliters of the 31% hydrochloric acid and we know when these two are mixed we get around an 11.6% solution of hydrochloric acid. Whenever you mix acids and waters like this they do heat up and you will get a reaction but in this small amount it's going to be very short-lived. As noted the first step is to dissolve our ammonium perchlorate in some water which is 60 milliliters that I just added right there. I turn the mixer on here, the stir bar, and slowly add the ammonium perchlorate if all of it doesn't dissolve it's not a huge deal because in the end it will react uh, properly all right we'll let that sit for a bit i'll be back it's been mixing for about 30 minutes now i would say about half of it has dissolved the ammonium perchlorate but half hasn't. <clears throat> it's not that big of a deal though, um, but I'm going to turn this down and we'll move it over to the 500 milliliter round bottom flask. Pouring in the uh, ammonia persulfate water mix here. All right, I'm going to rinse that down with just a tiny bit of distilled water. I'll be back. I'm adding the 40 milliliters of the approximately 11% hydrochloric acid to my pressure equalizing addition funnel here. Well, that's a mouthful. Okay, once I pour the nitric acid into here, I'm gonna immediately add this addition funnel here with the hydrochloric acid to that opening right there. Everything will be sealed up. We'll start this to boil. Once it's boiling, we'll slowly drip in the hydrochloric acid. As the nasty gases are formed, they'll come up down here through the distillation tube in there, come up and around through the tubing and into the potassium hydroxide where, where they're gonna become inert except for the little bit of nitrogen produced which can harmlessly go into the atmosphere. Adding the 68% nitric acid, 40 milliliters here. And now I'm immediately adding the uh, addition funnel that's been also greased up good, through which we'll drip our 11.6% hydrochloric acid. turning the heat on and we'll keep heating it until it comes to a roiling boil. I have my fume hood running, of course. Down here, the full setup on the left is a hydrochloric acid, which will drip through into this mix here of potassium perchlorate, water, and nitric acid. The gases will come up through here, down through there, up and around this tube and through the potassium hydroxide. We just saw a bubble right there. And of course, the only gas that should come out of here is nitrogen. Since it started bubbling about 15 minutes ago, look at the sediment that's forming as some of those solids develop from the gases going through the potassium hydroxide. Just pretty cool evidence. Because these gases do dissolve better in cold solutions like potassium hydroxide, it's in ice, and I added a magnetic stir just to make it mix better. Why not? Just getting the earliest signs that this is about to boil. We've got a really good boiling going there so it's time to start adding this hydrochloric acid and on this side over here we can see that the gases continue to be produced so we've got 40 milliliters here of the hydrochloric acid and we want to drop wise add this over a period of a half hour to an hour which is one drop between about every five to ten seconds so i'm going to barely open this thing right here and start the addition what i'm going to do actually is just move it slightly and then we're going to watch and see what happens down there so I think I've got this at about the right rate here. Maybe it's a touch too slow right now, but I'm going to start with that and then we'll proceed. Obviously, again, this can take a long time, so I'll be back. 
Here you can see the end of the tube and the hydrochloric acid dripping out. It's probably close to one about every eight to 10 seconds. Well, we can see the temperature is right around 100 degrees Celsius. And that's the temperature which water boils. This is cool enough that some of it's condensing and coming over here, but that's good. We need to get rid of water anyways. It's been about 40 minutes and just over three quarters of the hydrochloric acid has dripped into the solution down here, which has turned yellow, which you would expect as our perchloric acid is formed. Just watching the last bit of hydrochloric acid drip in. After that's done, it's all about the temperature, driving it up high enough to get rid of the water and to complete the reaction. The temperature is still around 100 degrees Celsius. It's gone up a little bit here, but as we continue to boil this down here, we're gonna boil off the water and the temperature will go up until we start to boil off perchloric acid at around 203 degrees Celsius, which we already talked about. At that point, I'm gonna cool this down, put it in the freezer, just in case there's any ammonium perchlorate left, it will crystallize out of this, uh, and then we'll have our really good solution of perchloric acid. Well, the temperature, it continues to creep up there slowly. We're definitely losing volume on this side. I can tell by the ring stand holder there. And on this side, we continue to collect what is mostly water. This is boiling rapidly. It's been about two hours now. And um, I think it's lightening a little bit. I think some of the chlorine that was dissolved in there uh, is coming out of solution. I really cannot impress how well this has worked. I've been around this the whole time. Of course, the fume hood is running, but I have not had a problem with any gases or odors whatsoever. We are getting really close to the azeotropic uh, perchloric acid here. All of the yellow is coming out of it, which is great because perchloric acid is actually a clear solution. So that eventually had to happen. It's been three hours and our volume is significantly less, which we would expect. Um, the temperature up here jumped to around 180 degrees Celsius and it stopped. It's been there for a while. I can't video it. It's right behind that right there. But I think before it was boiling with large bubbles and <clears throat> it was really significant. Now it's calmed down a lot actually. And I think because of the uh, pressure, which is in that round bottom flask to some degree, the white smoke I was hoping to see will not occur. I think if it was in an open beaker being heated, that would probably happen. It's been documented, but uh, not in this round bottom flask. So we're gonna turn down the heat here and take a look at it. It's the time to turn down our gas absorber here. So I dismantled everything and I'm gonna pour our perchloric acid into this 150 milliliter flask here. got a way too big funnel but uh, better way too big than too small huh okay we have about 50 milliliters which is about what you expect going through the entire process especially getting rid of the water because it's hygroscopic, I am going to put a top on it, put it in the freezer for several hours and make sure nothing does crystallize. I doubt it will. Uh, and then after that, we'll test it. So in goes the perchloric acid. I'll leave it in here for uh, about two hours or so. It's been about two and a half hours and I'm going to get it out and check it. See if anything's crystallized. Nope, we got a perfectly clear solution here. All right, let's test it and play with it a little bit. Well, maybe play with it isn't the best way to say it. Because I don't want to contaminate the acid at all, I'm just going to take a drop out and put it on this watch glass so we can check the pH. Just a tiny bit there. You can't tell, but it is a little oily. It's kind of weird, actually. A little bit on the thick side. All right, let's test it and compare. And you can tell it's oily, it just doesn't soak up in the paper easily. But yeah, we've got a, a one, one to two again. I think this is definitely closer to a one though. You'd expect that from a really strong acid. And one of the last things I wanna do here is soak a little bit into some paper because it's organic, of course. And uh, this thing likes to produce very flammable things with organics. All right, look at that. Wow, that is so amazing to be honest. Wow, okay, oh gosh, this is crazy remarkable and I did not expect a reaction this strong. 
Okay. I think that's about it for trying its explosive properties. I'm always wanting to blow something up. <laughs>